What's up guys, Flying Scorpion here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the new matchmaking system for Evolve with particular focus on a post on the Evolve forums that does a really good job analyzing the data that we as players have access to, and uh, hopefully it's going to help some of us understand what's going on. It might be incorrect, the evaluation that this guy Taylor has come up with, but I think it sounds pretty intuitive. It makes sense to me. So I figure I'm going to make a video on it. Um, I want to make a video for Evolve. Normally I do gameplay video and I analyze my gameplay as Wraith, but I haven't played as Wraith. I only did three placement matches and I was getting so frustrated with the traversal glitch. And I also ran into the problem where I got stuck in the warp blast animation and I thought, okay, I am not, uh, playing Wraith or any monsters right now until they fix this issue. I could play as other monsters that aren't broken right now, but I really am interested to find out where I would place on the ranks with Wraith, because <clears throat> that's the one that I'm most competitive with. I want to know if I would end up in Gold League if I played 10 placement matches with Wraith uh, in current Hunt by 2 system, Hunt 2.0 system. But even if that was the case, even if Wraith wasn't bugged out, <clears throat> and I've started playing right now, I would probably end up running into a situation where I would get, you know, five or six or seven placement matches, and uh, the game would consider me to be pretty skilled, like maybe top tier silver, maybe even close to gold league or something, but it wouldn't be able to find a lot of silver skilled or, or like silver destroyer, I guess, or gold skilled hunter players to match me up with because there are a huge majority of hunter players trapped in the bronze destroyer area and maybe below or a little bit above that there even good players are kind of trapped there in what's sort of becoming an elo hell like league of legends and uh this post will hopefully explain some of that so i so what i'm saying is that i might not end up getting in gold league even if i win every single one of my placement matches because i would be repeatedly getting matched up with a mixture of skilled players and unskilled players because the skilled players are trapped with the unskilled players because the system doesn't actually look at your individual performance as a hunter it looks at the entire team whether they win or lose and it only takes one bad player to cause the entire team to lose so Let's look at the, the post here. So Taylor posted where rank stands after one week on PC. He grabbed this chart, he made this chart, and he manually got the data from what is publicly available uh, on the leaderboards for Hunt 2.0. So let's read what, he's po what he wrote here. I collected this data on Monday evening, and keep in mind these numbers are constantly changing as people play ranked. I assume that the devs are performing much more detailed analysis, incorporating more and better data than this. Here is a link to the latest dev info regarding the ranking system. So I'm going to click on that, let that load up here. <clears throat> and Miel posted a really informative post. Um, I think uh, she was on the live stream today. And uh, um, this is a really good post. It's very informative. It's got some really good links that explains how the matchmaking system works. It doesn't totally explain it. Uh, she said that they're using a modified version of the Glico 2 matchmaking system. And the reason why I think that you really need to modify that system is because the Glico 2 matchmaking system is designed for one player versus another player, such as in chess. Uh, it's not designed for teams of players against one another. Uh, and that's really where the pitfall is in the matchmaking system. So if you want, you can click on this and read them. I'm not going to get too much into the math here, but I will talk to you a bit about uh, what happens when you're doing your placement matches. So when you start off and you have no skill at all, based on what I read in, in the information that was posted there, uh, with the matchmaking system, I don't know how much they modified it. I don't know what their modifications were, but with the Glico 2 matchmaking system as it is prior to modifications, it gives you what's it gives you 1,500 points, I believe. <coughs> That's generally the average 1500 points is considered average something like that and it also adds you this gives this number that it assigns to you that's sort of like your how random you are it's like we it's basically how accurate it thinks that it has you play so if you sometimes beat 
really good players and then sometimes you lose against really bad players the system's going to be like whoa like we don't know if this guy's really good or if he's really bad so <clears throat> it'll place you somewhere between the two between really good and really bad players but it'll also give you this really big random number and what that means is then if uh, a really good player loses against you they're not going to lose a lot of points because uh, the system goes, well, we think he's somewhere in the middle in terms of skill, like average, but we don't know for sure. And then you, as that player with this big random number, would end up getting a lot of points towards gold if you won. And then as you play more and more, as long as the, you sort of get more consistency, if you become more consistent, um, your randomness will go down, and then you'll start getting matched up with more and more players that truly are closer to your skill level. So when you start off, you get 1,500 points and you've got a very big randomness. Uh, it's 350 points of randomness. And that means anyone from you know uh, 1,450 points to uh, less than 1,000 points can get matched up against you. And you'll be playing against a wide variety of different players and then you beat them or lose against them. And then it'll kind of refine it down and figure out where you go. And you'll assign you points, you'll either go up or you'll go down based on that. What we're noticing here, uh, based on these gra graphs here, and I want to point out, based on what I read I, and what I've heard, I think this might be wrong, but uh, 1,500 points is somewhere around bronze, destroyer, and skill, and uh, silver uh, skill. Somewhere between these two. And what we're noticing is that there are a lot of players really close to that 1,500 point or a little bit below that, <clears throat> and there hasn't been that much distribution from the starting point. Uh, where they start off at <clears throat> and I think that this is because skilled players and unskilled players are getting jumbled together and they're consistently getting mediocre results as a byproduct of that Just give me a second to finish drinking my water there all right so uh, now we've talked a bit about what uh, Miel posted here if you want to you can read more here it's a really good post I didn't read all of it. I read like the first three links. I didn't even go through all of them th very thoroughly. I just got the gist. Okay. <clears throat> it is too early to make any firm conclusions, but there are several observations that jump out at me. Um, after the first week, there were 4,370 ranked hunters on PC and 1,160 ranked monsters for a ratio of 3.77 hunters per one monster. Now, you might be thinking, oh, the that's bad because there's not a 4 to 1 ratio. But what I want to tell you is that it's not as bad as it looks because if I skill up as hunter or if I get placed as hunter, I do all 10 placement matches as hunter and then I also do all 10 placement matches as monster, then that's one more player on both sides of the fence. And then if all 4,000 something uh, players that were on PC that did all their placement ranking uh, matches did both hunter and monster, then the ratio would be close to one to one. So. It's not as bad as it looks. It just means that there are a lot of players that were only on one side of the fence or the other or whatever. <clears throat> the rank distribution of monsters is much better than the rank distribution of hunters. Okay, so let's look back at the chart. Uh, the lighter colored bars are the monster players and the dark colored bars are the hunter players. Notice that the hunter players are really tall bars that are close together and it's not this much of this curve. There isn't much of a curve there. Um, it's in fact there's no no players here and uh, oh we got some up here for hunters but the the bars for the monster players is a little bit more evenly distributed and you've definitely got a lot more up on the upper end here in silver one and silver two especially silver two there's actually more this is where it changes where you've got more monster players and hunter players in silver two and in silver three here in silver four it's the difference is almost negligible again the difference is almost negligible you've got what like one difference in player again difference is almost negligible in this one and then it changes a little bit more here now why um why is it that we've got more hunter players up here in the gold area but less uh, monster players and no monster players here in gold four and gold five well the problem is that these monster players especially these ones here in the silver area where's the hunters i'm waving my my mouse right over here this is where the hunter player bars should be but they're all down here so if there were actually hunter players here ranked in the silver area like a, a, 
a substantial amount enough for these monster players to queue against, they wouldn't be able they wouldn't be constantly getting matched with subpar players or subpar teams and only getting one point every time they win and then if they lose it's not like they're going to go jump way down right because that's how the matchmaking system works it thinks oh you definitely should win this and if you lose this then you're going to go way down in points that's the way that the system works so why is that uh, on Monday evening, 86% of the hunters were only in three rank levels, Bronze Elite, Bronze Destroyer, and Silver Skilled. A full two-thirds of hunters were in the top two Bronze ranks. So that's saying 66% of all the hunter players were in these two bars on Monday. So that was on Monday. And then the monster players were more evenly distributed. So why were there so many hunter players stuck in this area and not getting distributed? Are they truly this skilled? There are 11 hunters in the top two bronze ranks for every monster in those same ranks. If you look at the top two bronze ranks as well as the bottom two silver ranks, the ratio improves to 4.8 hunters for each monster player. So he's saying um, it's an 11 to 1 ratio of hunt, hunt, ugh, hunters to monster player in these two. But if you look at these two bar, all of four of these bars here with the big bulk of players, it improves to a 4.8 ratio. I, I wouldn't really be super concerned about the ratio because once again, uh, I think I could be wrong here, but I think that if uh, over time a lot of players uh, finish their placement matches for both monster and hunter player, uh, those ratios wouldn't be as substantial or as an indicative of uh, any any problems. But you know, I could be wrong. I'm not like the best math guy, the math guru. Uh, there are no hunter or monsters in the lowest bronze rank and a negligible number in the second lowest. So I can just check my phone here. Oh, I got a lot of stuff on there. So what he's saying is, look at this. Bronze skilled. Not a single player, bron uh, monster or hunter player, is in so, uh, bronze skilled rank. Not a single one. And out of the thousands of hunter players, I could count how many are in the second tier of bronze on one hand. So that means if you're brand spanking new to the game and you've never played a first person shooter game in your life, you could be face rolling the keyboard right now and there's a very small chance that you would get into Bronx Guild. I could be like literally taking my keyboard to the face and going <laughs> for 20 minutes and I somehow would probably stay somewhere in this other area where the other players are. That's kind of funny, right? I'm sure some of us have seen players where we think maybe they are rolling their faces on the keyboard based on how well they're playing. So less than 1% of hunters and 2% of monsters are ranked gold, skilled, or above. So he's saying there's very few players up here in this area. And uh, yeah, let's go into the thoughts here, okay? This first one I think is really important to talk about. I applaud TRS for their dedication to improving and expanding the Evolve experience. I know they are hard at work, even now, on how to improve the balance ch balance changes and the rank system of Hunt 2.0. This is a truly remarkable game that is tremendous fun when played to its full potential. Thank you to all the Evolve team and from Turtle Rock Studios and, and 2K that work hard to make the game what it is and promote such an interesting and committed community. You know what? I think it's very worth, it's definitely worth saying that because there's so much negativity on the forums. There's so much toxicity from people and their feedback to the Turtle Rock devs. You know, it almost, it makes me worried. I'm like, I don't want them to be discouraged because the game is fantastic. Like, why would I make this YouTube video if I didn't care? I mean, if I didn't care, I would just quit the game and go find another one. I care. I love the game. The game's great. It's super fantastic. It's fun. And that's why I, as one member of the community, is willing to put in the time and the effort and the work it takes it, out of my precious free time to sit down and make this video and just sort of spread awareness to other players and to talk about stuff like this and, you know, put put uh, basically what's written here into verbal words because some people don't like to read walls of text. They'd rather watch somebody else talk and whatnot. So anyways, Turtle Rock Studios, you guys have a really good game. Like it's a really good game. So don't give up. It's so good. And I'm so glad that you guys put this, this matchmaking system in there. I know it's going through its growing pains, but don't give up. 
don't be afraid to fail. Keep going with it. And this could be really remarkable. This could really change. And uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of, it could be the spearhead for a new matchmaking system that other games will follow in your footsteps. So you guys are taking risks with what you're doing and kudos to you. I like that. So don't be afraid to fail. Don't give up. All right, uh, the experience of being in a bronze level team and frequently playing higher level skilled monsters is a result of the current player base and is unlikely to change unless we get an influx of new monster players. <clears throat> now, somebody quoted um, Talo later on in this thread, like way down there, and he said, oh, we need more players or the game's going to die. And, uh, and and Taylor was like, that's not what I'm saying. And I and I also was like, well, that's not what he was saying. Um, and I posted actually a thread myself. You can search for Flying Scorpion and look for the threads I posted. I said that there are not enough bronze-skilled monster players. So I, I'm not exactly sure why that is. I have some ideas on why that is, and I'm just going to spit all that out now. Um Playing monster uh, is really easy when you're up against, especially in the beginning stages. Like when I was ranking up, uh, when I, st I started rank one, I, the first thing I did was play as monster. And it was easy. It was so easy because I was playing with other players that were rank one that just started the game, the hunter teams. Now what happens is if you start playing monster right off the bat, there's a good chance that you may have a silver or even a couple silvers or even a gold level player trapped in bronze league and masqueraded as a poorly skilled player. So it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And, and it's discouraging. It's really discouraging to just get stomped over and over again as the monster player. Whereas if you play as a hunter player and your team and you lose, you don't take all of the blame. It's not totally your fault that you lost. You can point fingers at your teammates and be like, well, and also, even if you do lose, I'd say that it's more fun to lose as a hunter player than it is as a Bronx player because you also get that social aspect to it. And Chloe on the stream today even said, um, she was playing with these guys and one of the guy was being really animated and uh, she's a Turtle Rock uh, Studios uh, employee. And she was saying one guy was like, you know, uh, he was mimicking Jack, the player he was playing. And I've said before in the past, I would rather play with people that are maybe not as skilled as the best if they're more fun to play with. And so what are you going to do? Are you going to lose over and over again as the monster player and not have anybody else to, to lament in your uh, team's defeat together? or And to celebrate that rare 1 out of 10 victory? Or are you going to play as the hunter players where you do have that opportunity to talk with the other players and whatnot? Even if you're losing, you're going to get that social element, right? So I think actually that's one of the reasons why there are more uh, poorly skilled players choosing to play as hunter rather than playing as monster. And there's probably other reasons as well. They might be wanting to learn the game and by playing with other players in the on the hunter side of things, there's more opportunities to do that. So the current ranking system seems to do a decent job ranking monsters, but it's lumping hunters together in three ranks that don't reflect the broad range of player ability contained in those three ranks. Since the ranking system is based on a one versus one game rating system, it makes sense that it does a better job separating monster rank than separating hunter rank. Ranking hunter performance based solely on team wins and losses intuitively seems less effective. So not much more to be said about that. He basically just put in succinct words what I just said a moment, a moment ago. There, were, there are issues with monsters not being able to rank up because there is a shortage of high rank hunters to fight and earn points off of. Hunters seem to have a problem where just one poor performing hunter can prevent three other hunters from advancing in rank. Um, and there are bron and bronze elite seems to be a hard floor for hunters where it is hard to fall below that rank due to the lack of bronze level monsters 30 percent of monsters are bronze almost 70 percent of monster players are silver and 1.6 percent are gold <clears throat> while hunters are about 70 percent bronze 28 percent silver about 30 percent silver and one percent gold all right 
Let's move on to the next point. Why do the lower bronze level of bronze levels exist if no players get placed in them? Let's go back to here. Not a single player is in bronze skilled, and the amount of hunter players out of the thousands that are in bronze, whatever this is called, the second level of bronze, can be counted on one hand. There's four of them. And the monster players, there's eight of them there. Oh, I totally lost my spot while I was reading this. My bad. All right. I am seeing at least one player in almost every pickup group match that is and either is either a new player learning the game or a lower level casual player but they aren't ranked bronze elite but they are ranked bronze elite and they lose games for otherwise decent teams those players should be getting bumped down until they have a chance to learn and improve the game's basic mechanics and, and tactics I would even go so far as to say that those players should be getting placed in bronze skilled and bronze expert okay that's what the B2 is called Bronx Expert, and that players at that level of play play against bots when there are no monsters of the same level available. <clears throat> Only once they can consistently beat bot monsters should they be able to move into Bronze Master and play only human opponents. It should also make up for the shortage of low, lower ranked Bronx monsters. How to separate the less capable Bronx players could be a challenge. I would recommend that factors such as low total hunter playtime and possibly very low performance metrics could override the placement system and put the player in the lowest rank. And I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, it's uh, MacMan has said that it's been discussed. Uh, he, he said they're also discussing doing sort of a, a handicap system. If you've got a high ranking monster player versus low ranking hunter players, they might handicap it so that the monster the hunter players do more damage and have greater damage resistance in the match and then if the monster loses they don't lose as many points and if they win they get enough points to make uh substantial gains towards ranking up so they're not so that these players that are sort of being held back in silver league can distribute up and we get an even better spread of players going up into the gold leagues uh, these players that are up here in the gold leagues the monster players uh, they may have just been lucky enough to get the matches against the gold, the the handful of gold uh, hunter teams that were awake at the time and playing. If the player base continues to be imbalanced to where there are lots of high ranking monsters getting matched with hunters that are four or five ranks below them, I would like to see an impl implementation of a handicap system so that low ranking hunters would have a greater chance of getting a win against rank, uh, high ranking monsters and those same monsters would have more challenging matches. The handicap would probably be a percentage increase in damage output and damage reduction and possibly jetpack recharge rate. The handicap would also allow monsters to rank up even though they may be playing Bronx teams and would not carry as severe of a penalty for losing. So he basically said what I just said right there. Um, yeah, I think that these are all great suggestions. I think implementing or augmenting the current matchmaking system with all of these suggestions would be great. That's what I think. But um, okay, let's get to the last point here. The point of this thread is to shed some further light on the current progress of ranked play. And I also provided some of my opinions, which I hope are constructive. I will try to update the chart above on a weekly basis, although it is annoying to gather the data as there is no way to skip to the bottom of each rank to see the final count. The only option is by pressing page down repeatedly. And I imagine you had to press page down a lot of times when there are 1500 players in these two leagues so that's probably a lot of tedious left clicking of the mouse so uh mac man has come in here he's said yeah they've uh, they're noticing this they're discussing a couple of things like the handicap system uh i said that uh we should augment the current matchmaking system with individual hunter performance metrics uh he said they're also discussing that so kudos to mac man for for uh you know, getting involved in the discussion, and then we've got some players here, and then eventually we get to people just bitching and whining and fighting with each other. But, anyways, so uh, yeah, I uh, I think this that was really interesting. You know, mad props to Taylor for putting this together, man. That was really cool of you. Uh, he seems like a really smart guy, and uh, yeah, hopefully this sheds some light on you guys on at least 
some opinions of what's going on here. And uh, once again, uh, if Turtle Rock Studios can figure out a way to make this system better and improve upon it, you really are blazing a trail for matchmaking systems in team-based games. Like you guys are like, this is like science. This is like the new, like cutting edge of like making new discoveries and inventions and learning things. And that's awesome. That's super cool to be around and actually see this evolve <laughs> from the data that we have. So, um, yeah, uh, it, so I see I've been, I'm looking at my timer here. I've been talking for 27 minutes now. So, uh, I'm just going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, in the future, after uh, Wraith gets fixed and the uh, if just the the traversals get fixed, I'm going to go back to playing as Wraith. I'm going to finish my placement matches. Hopefully, I'm not just going to be pub stomping bronze players, but actually playing against some silver or maybe even gold players, if I'm even that good. Um, but I look forward to discovering that and finding out, and um, this matchmaking system just makes it much more likely that that will happen in the future. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this has been Flying Scorpion. I'll see you next time. Adios.